Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about Pluto. One of the most favorite objects for a lot of us, especially those of us who grew up when it was still a planet. Now today I wanted to discuss one of the more recent discoveries that also suggests that there is actually a very large ocean underneath Pluto's surface, but most importantly talk about some of the more recent discoveries based on the observations from 2015. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right here is Pluto shining in all of its glory. This is a little bit exaggerated, but basically you can actually see the nitrogen atmosphere that Pluto does seem to possess. And this is something that was discovered by the amazing New Horizons mission back in 2015. And 2015 was essentially the biggest moment for Pluto and a lot of the researchers studying Pluto, mostly because New Horizons mission got to fly through this area and analyze a lot of the things in a lot of detail, while at the same time taking the most incredible pictures of the surface of Pluto as well. Now normally, um, if you were just a regular person, this is kind of what you would see. If you were to fly by through Pluto, you would see this beautiful surface, and that's about it. But since New Horizons probe was also able to take photos of Pluto from the dark side, and also analyze Pluto using a lot of other devices, we now have a pretty good picture of what may have happened to Pluto back in the days. But more importantly, we might now have the explanation for how this beautiful formation was formed. The super famous image of the heart on Pluto, also known as Sputnik Planitia. And obviously at the same time while flying through this region we were also able to see a little bit more about Charon, the biggest moon of Pluto, which allowed us to understand a little bit more about this whole system as well. Now if you were to look at Pluto and its moons, you would see this beautiful dance of moons of Pluto, all five of them moving around in a very peculiar way. A way that's kind of difficult to explain because only one of them is tightly locked, Charon, in the middle, but the other four are kind of wobbling around. And at first it's a little bit difficult to explain all of this, but once we start thinking about what happened to Pluto and its surface, it starts making a little bit more sense. Now one of the biggest uh, unusual discoveries from 2015 that is still a little bit surprising today as well, is that the surface of Pluto is so different. And it also seems to possess a lot of, I guess you can call them signs of cataclysms. Signs of really, really, really violent events that most likely completely reshaped this object. And another unusual discovery was that the side we saw first was almost entirely different and I guess in some sense almost completely opposite of the opposite side that we actually got to observe a little bit as well. In other words, Pluto does seem to be um, in some sense very, very diverse and has a lot of unusual geological activity that would be really difficult to explain. Because it's a small object, it shouldn't really have any geological activity, yet it does seem to have something going on here. And what's most important here is of course this beautiful shape known as um, Sputnik Planitia, which also seems to have some kind of an unusual origin. Now in the last few years a lot of scientists started to speculate that Sputnik Planitia was very likely formed by a large collision. And some of the recent studies started to actually find more evidence for this and even identify something else on the opposite side of Pluto that actually gives us a lot more credibility. When looking at the opposite side of Pluto, scientists discovered these somewhat unusual rock-like formations, um, almost like ripples, located pretty much on the opposite side of the so-called heart of Pluto. And these unusual formations do actually help scientists to identify what may have happened here in the past, but what's more important, they may also help scientists to understand what's happening in Pluto, inside of Pluto, right now. Now here's what they think may have happened, and here's what they think is going on right now. And by the way, all of this was actually virtually presented at this event that was cancelled from being in person to being online. And so if you'd like to learn more about this, you can check it out in the link in the description below. And so seeing these unusual formations on the opposite side of the so-called Pluto's heart is of course an indication of a very large collision event, which essentially manifested in the formation of various structures on the opposite side of the impact, and the impact may have actually been really, really massive. In terms of the actual size, it was very likely size of the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, Vesta. And here it was probably around 400 kilometers across and slammed into Pluto so hard that basically a lot of the materials ended up crashing on the opposite side, creating a lot of other craters we're observing. 
but the actual impact also generated several types of waves that then propagated throughout the entire dwarf planet. Some of these waves were moving really fast, and so they formed some of these other structures we're seeing. But as these waves propagated through the inside of the dwarf planet, specifically through the internal structure itself, it very likely was slowed down by something on the inside, because this is exactly what the scientists seem to be observing. Something slowed it down. And from Earth, we know that only one thing can possibly slow down these waves. That something has to be an underground ocean. So this also gives a lot more evidence to the presence of ocean underneath Pluto. Ocean with a depth of about 150 kilometers or about 93-94 miles, which is actually deeper than anything here on planet Earth. And remember, all of this was discovered during this brief moment in 2015, when the New Horizons probe decided to pass by right here, took some photos, got some data, and then flew to the next object, now known as Arakoth. Which is of course this other object we've talked about in one of the previous videos. But going back to Pluto, this is a pretty interesting observation and also answers the question of why so many different features on Pluto are so different. At the same time, it also kind of explains why when looking at the surface of Pluto, we seem to be detecting a lot of really old um, asteroid collisions all across the surface, but almost nothing in the region right here, in the heart of Pluto. And this is the center of collision where there's probably still a lot of various activity, a lot of different convection going on, and possibly a lot of other interaction between the liquid ocean and the surface that was created by this relatively large crater. And this is not a far-fetched theory at all, because something almost exactly the same very likely happened to Mercury early on as well. We know that when we look at the surface of Mercury, we seem to actually find almost exactly the same feature right here. This is known as Caloris Planitia. This is about 1500 kilometers or about 1000 miles in diameter. And on the opposite side, we also find unusual line-like formations that seem to indicate a large collision may have disrupted this planet, causing a lot of really interesting formations on the other side. And in case of these smaller objects like Mercury and Pluto, when the impact is large enough and when the planet or the dwarf planet is not massive enough, the impact causes the planet or the dwarf planet itself to act as a kind of a lens. And because it acts like a lens, it sort of magnifies the force on the opposite side, creating a lot of deformation as a result. And this is especially true for less massive objects or objects that are relatively low in density, like most dwarf planets. So when a collision occurs with these objects, there's actually at least two different types of waves that are being generated. The initial shock wave and then the stress wave that follows it. And because all of these waves move at different speeds and also um, the speed is also dependent on the material that it's moving through, it actually generates different formations on the opposite side which can then be easily seen through different observations and measurements. For example, it will move really really fast through the actual crust itself but will move much slower through ice and really, really slow through water. Which is how the scientists were able to deduce the formation of these features, which then explain that there's gotta be water on the inside. And more specifically for Pluto, it's actually the existence of various spherical features and also various surface fissures that can only be formed by these different waves that probably were a result of a large collision. And although these features can technically be explained without a collision, it's a lot more likely that a large collision did occur to create so many of them on the opposite side of this unusual formation known as Sputnik Planitia. And so even though this is a pretty good explanation for how this feature was created and how a lot of other features were created, we obviously still need a lot of follow-up studies and preferably even another mission to Pluto to try to confirm all of this. And this type of a collision would also explain why the Pluto is slightly tipped in its rotation. Also, it might explain the existence of other moons around Pluto. And the actual collision probably emitted a lot of various particles that then landed on Charon and gave it the peculiar deformed shape that it has today. So something cataclysmic probably occurred in this system a few billion years ago and probably resulted in the creation of all of these moons along with a lot of other unusual features we've detected on Pluto so far. It could also be responsible for Pluto even having atmosphere, or very thin atmosphere that is, as well as what seem to be relatively active geological conditions on the surface, some of which are kind of difficult to explain otherwise. Not to mention that this kind of a collision would be enough to actually even create this type of ocean underneath the surface, and may also give us a lot of evidence to suggest that this is how the ocean on Earth was created as well. But what's really interesting here is the difference between Pluto and everything we've discovered on Pluto, and 
the previously mentioned Aerokoth. Here, the creation and also the conditions are almost entirely the opposite. The entire object was created in relatively peaceful, really slow conditions, where instead of an actual collision, the two parts here very slowly merge together, so slowly as a matter of fact that they kind of just blended in. There was no collision, there was no impact. Suggesting, of course, that some parts of the solar system never really experienced a lot of cataclysm or destruction, but instead stayed peaceful for billions of years. But anyway, Pluto is definitely a lot more interesting, mostly because of all of these unusual features, and mostly because a lot of us still believe that this is still a planet, or at least an honorary planet that it should be. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll make sure to come back and talk a little bit more about this once we discover more about these unusual features and what probably happened on Pluto. But until then, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.